Hey, good morning, YouTube, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the Vizio, 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 Zen K1. And uh, let me show you, this is the box. I'll show you an unboxing at the end of this video. But uh, right now, let me just show you the drone. Here it is right here. And on the top, they've written Fast and Furious. Well, let me tell you about this drone really quick. It actually has a spot right here for a micro SD card. Finally, they put one in. The camera can actually angle up a little bit and all the way down 90 degrees. That's pretty decent. It has the claim to fame with this here drone is that it has a 30 minute flight time. That's the spec. I don't know if it has 30 minutes. I highly doubt it, but it's probably not too far off because it is not very big. It looks a little bit smaller than some of the other drones on the market. So they've slimmed things down, put a big battery in it, and uh, they get a lot more flight time. Brushless motors, foldable props, foldable arms. Has a flight range of about 500 meters. At least that's what the specs say. So that's going to depend how good your phone is because, you know, the signal is between the drone and your phone. So if you have a crappy phone with crappy Wi-Fi, it's probably going to be less than that. There is also image stabilization, but the image stabilization is not on a chip inside the drone. As far as I can tell, it's in the app. So if you have a good phone, you'll get image stabilization. And if your phone's not so great, well, then the image stabilization may or may not work. Also, uh, they do call this a 4K drone, but that's 4K for photos and it's 2K for video. There's also a zoom feature on here, a 50 times zoom. It's not an optical zoom, it's a digital zoom and it's not in the camera, it's in the software on your phone. So you're basically just zooming into an image. So you can imagine at 50 times zoom, it's not gonna look that great. It does have optical flow on the bottom, which means that if you're flying indoors, you can use that to keep the drone steady. Of course, outdoors, you're gonna use the GPS and this optical flow when you're flying outdoors, uh, you can use it for the camera. So it's got a camera pointing down and you can switch between the forward camera and the downward camera if you wish. All right, enough chat. Let's go fly this thing. And then at the end of this video, I'll show you an unboxing. So you see everything that comes in this box. All right, let's start up this drone, power it on. You'll see some red lights go along here. Maybe you won't see them outside. It's kind of dark. Next, power on the controller. You should see a display right here. And if I move this up and down, we'll lock into the drone, a nice binding. There we go. So you'll know that you're connected to the drone when you see the battery remaining for the drone on this here controller. Next, we connect to the Wi-Fi. Please remember all new drones are five gigahertz. So that means you need a phone that was made in the last couple of years that has Wi-Fi enabled 802.11 AC protocol. The app you wanna use is called FPV Go. Hit start flight, hit submit, and we're in the app and ready to go. Now we're going to do the gyro and the compass calibration. The gyro calibration is basically pull these down to the right. That should be gyro calibration from what I remember. Next we do compass calibration, which is right on your screen. It says north, south, east, west right here. Press that. And for compass calibration, we're just going to spin it three times one way and three times another way. Then point the nose down, do it again. I just want to point out quickly that You'll see here my camera in the front. I can go way up and away down. And unfortunately, it does make the beeps. I can go 90 degrees down. I'm not gonna go all the way down because there's rocks there. So I'll just point it like that. Let's take a look at our controller. We have 13 satellites over on the top left. We only need seven to fly, so we're all good. And our battery's pretty much full. So uh, let's take it up. All right, start the motors, pull these in. And uh, let's take it up, see how it hovers. So here's our drone. Get a nice shot of it, nice close up. There it is hovering. And go this way. And there we have this beautiful drone. It's all set to go. Walk around it. All right, let's take it up. If you're looking at my phone display, there's a little 50 times zoom at the top. I'm gonna hit that. See on the right, I have a little slider. I can zoom in. I just grab that little orange thing. I'm zooming in. Here, let's put let's put me in the, uh, the image. I'm gonna zoom right into me. So there you go. The more I zoom, the more you can see Jello. Now Jello, if you see Jello on a drone like this, it's caused by the props being unbalanced. 50 times zoom, look at me. 
that looks terrible. I'm not going to come all the way out. Nobody's going to use I guess if you wanted to zoom in on something and see it, you could. Obviously, the more I zoom in, the more the jello becomes more pronounced. Whoa, 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 a quick time out here because I want to talk about jello in a drone. So if you buy a drone and you fly it and it doesn't have a gimbal on the front, see, there's no gimbal to control the sideways, sideways, up, down, and all the other stuff, then there's always a good chance you might get jello. Now, Jell-O is usually 100, well, let's go 99.9% .9 of the time, it's caused by props that are not balanced. So on this here quad, these props are not balanced. So that's why you get Jell-O. It's not, it's not like they built the quad and said, hey, let's throw Jell-O in it as an option. It's because the props are not balanced. So when they tested this and flew it around themselves, they probably had props that were really good and it flew great with no Jell-O. As soon as you add props that are just made by the lowest bidder, hence these ones, um, you're going to get jello. And foldable props, oh my god, foldable props are the worst on these low cost drones for uh, jello because they are not balanced. And not only that, a lot of times they're tight. You see how they bend? They flip out like that. So when they spin, they have to be able to stay a certain way. And a lot of times they can't move as they rotate and they just get stuck in a certain way and your motor goes like that. And that's jello. That's how you get jello. So if you have any drone at home or say you buy this one and all of a sudden you get it and you have jello in the video, just balance your props and the jello will go away. And that's it. And now back to the video. So Jell-O is fixable on these drones, but honestly, I'm out here recording right now. I don't have the time to take all this apart and balance the prop. I'm not saying if you buy this drone, you're going to get Jell-O. Your props may be balanced when you get it, so everything might be fine, but that's what happens. On my little controller, I have a speed dial here. It says if you move it to the left, it's minus, and if you move it to the right, it's plus. So let's go minus. This should be slow speed, which seems pretty fast to me. And I'm not going to go too far because for some reason, I have a habit of running into trees. So let's do this over here and let's put it all the way to the right. It should beep. There we go. Two beeps means I'm in fast speed. So there we go. That would be fast speed. I will say to me, this drone really seems like it flies like the SJRC F11. When I move these controls, it's very similar. So if you're used to the SJRC F11, I think you'd, you'd like this drone because it's like an upgraded version of that one. All right, looking at my screen, there's a follow me function over on the left. You see, it looks like a controller. I'll click on that. And that should be GPS follow me mode, I believe. Let's see, I'm gonna walk. Is it gonna follow me? It's actually pretty good. Now I don't have the image stabilization on or anything. So this is no stabilization and follow me. Okay, stabilization is on. I'm gonna put the follow me function on. Does the stabilization make it more like there's jello in the image? It's kind of weird. So this is with stabilization on and follow me. It does have a nice follow me. It does seem to be working. Okay, if you're looking at my phone, there's an orbit me function. I'll click that. Please use the remote, blah, 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 submit. So now over on the top right, it says orbit to the right or orbit to the left. So I don't know, I'll pick one. Sending data, so it should start to rotate in location where it is. All right, it's going around. So I could control the camera, I can move it up and down. Let me show you the 90 degrees down. Let's go all the way down. I think I still have stabilization on. Yeah, so there's, there's looking down as it's orbiting. Also, while it's going over, it's going over slowly up ahead here. So I can use these joysticks to control it. So I can make the orbit even wider. There we go, I got her going way back now. And there she goes around, nice wide orbit. And move it up so I'm not hitting anything. This is what the orbit surround looks like with the stabilization off. So maybe the image is a bit sharper with the stabilization off. It's, it's kind of unclear what uh, how it's working on here all right if you look at my screen i'm going to show you the waypoints and uh, there's a bit of a problem because watch when i go to waypoints i have no maps so i'm looking all over my screen i can see it says google at the lower left but i could try to go in out on my screen here i got nothing nothing normally it's just the way the maps are i can't see any way to get the maps to work so without maps i can't really show you the waypoints on here my phone is an android phone and sometimes maps don't work on certain phones. They seem to work on iOS phones, but on Android, sometimes not. I did try loading them before I actually connected, but it wouldn't let me load them or connect because it says, hey, you have to be flying to have this waypoint thing run. So 
So sorry guys, can't get the maps to work. You can look, look at the bottom camera. So if I click to the bottom camera, there we go. We're gonna look down, I'm gonna take it up. And I'll walk under, I should be under, there we are. Under, look up and take it away up. So now I'm shooting out the bottom camera. That's what I'm filming with. It's only a 720p camera. Looks like I'm on the moon. So I'm at a beautiful beach. You can see the beach out here. Here we go. I'm gonna take this way up and let's see what we see. Now here you go. I'm just gonna show you the camera. Take a look at this. So we can see the curvature of the world. If I bring the camera up, we could straighten it out. There we go. So that's the camera full up. And look at that. I can look at the props. And if I bring the camera down, so we'll get the props out and we get the world. We can make the world look like a GoPro round and then we can come down and uh, look all the way down 90 degrees back down me. See that little shadow way down there? <laughs> that little dot, that's me. So I'm going full blast forward and there we go. So I just brought the camera down a bit. I think I got the props in the frame a little bit. Let me bring the camera down a bit more. And uh, did I get it any better? I'm out 100 meters right now. I'll just see how far I can go. I've got enough battery power, it says. I'll see what the range is on this thing. I'm at 170. Oh, that beeping tells me I'm getting low signal. Yeah, so I could see it right there, receiver signal. It says receiver signal's back, but I lost it. So I lost signal at 280 meters. So I'll hit return home. And it should come on back. So now, just in case you don't know how it works with range on a drone, it works like this. You see my phone, I have a cover on it, a rubbery plastic cover. That affects the range a little bit. The range is between your phone and the drone. So that means if you have a crappy phone with crappy Wi-Fi, one of them is gonna be weak and you're not gonna get a long range. All right, so let's see how close it comes to our landing pad. Here's the takeoff pad where it took off and that's where it's coming down over there. For some reason it does not like where it took off. All right, so there we are. It should turn itself off. And there we go, all ready to pick up. So, what do you think about that, guys? What do you think about the fast and the furious? All right, so the Zen K1 drone, what did you think of that? Well, you know what? If you take the jello out of the video, because I was just re-watching the video, if you could take that jello out, if I took the time and balanced the props, uh, the video is actually quite decent. You know, the colors look pretty good, except for the bottom camera. The bottom, the bottom camera on all these drones, uh, they use a 720p camera. It doesn't have the right color effect or lighting. It's not even made for taking video. It's made for optical flow. So it never has good video on the bottom. But all in all, you know, this thing here flies fine. It's got a nice long flight time and it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I could only get, like I said, 280 meter range, but then again, that's up to my cell phone. If you have a better cell phone than mine for Wi-Fi, you're gonna get farther. It's that simple. So I'm gonna put links below to where you can find this drone. It is on the Geekbind website and I believe it is on sale. I don't believe it's very expensive. I think it's just over $100, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so check below, you'll see the price. Maybe I threw the price in the description, I never know. But check below anyways if, you do, if I haven't mentioned the price or you've seen the price and uh, you'll find out what the price is for your country. And if it's something you want, then go ahead and get it because it's, uh, it's a full featured drone. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that review. I'm out here at a beach at the moment because, well, you know, there's not too many days left to be out at a beach in my area of Canada. So before winter is coming, I'm out here enjoying what little sun there is left. Not that it's gonna affect my white skin. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the drone, just post them below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next video with lots more reviews. Take care. All right, you just watched the video on the Zen K1 and you want to check out what comes in the box. So I'm going to show you super fast because I know you're a busy person. So first thing you get in the box would be the instructions. Next thing you get the drone itself and the controller and the drone you've seen it in the video already. It's brushless motors, foldable arms, brushless props, batteries on the top. On the bottom you have the optical flow right here and your micro SD fits right in there. Get the lighting so you see it. You have your camera in the front, see how it points up a little bit and it can come all the way down 90 degrees here. And if you're wondering about the battery, let me just pull it off. On the bottom it says it's a 2500 milliamp 11.1 .1 volt battery and it is charged by USB right there. And now let's quickly weigh the drone. 
501 grams. Let me just pull out the controller. It's an interesting design. It's almost like a little Xbox controller, just a little bit different the way you hold it. You'll notice there are no antennas on here, which is a nice feature because a lot of times antennas are just for show. They do nothing. You do have the two dials in the front. One's for speed, one's for your camera to go up and down. This is for your cell phone. That is your display right there. And if I power it on, there you can see the display that I was talking about in the video. It shows it all. And uh, ignore these little things. This is just for protection and packaging. And it actually looks like that. And you will need batteries and they fit in the back. And I believe it takes three AA batteries. And if you're wondering if there's anything else in the box, well, yes, there is. You pull this out. If I can get this whole thing out of there. And underneath you have your charging system, which is basically a USB cable. And you have your spare props right down in that box. And that is everything. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up.